Hello everyone, welcome back. Myself Dr. Ranjit, a pathologist by profession. And today in this video, we are going to talk about tomato flu. What exactly is tomato flu? What are the symptoms of tomato flu? Who is going to get affected and how does the disease transmit? Is it really a viral disease, bacterial disease or is something to be worried of or not? Is it a deadly disease or is it as funny as it sounds? So in this video, let's clear all our doubts and queries regarding tomato flu and let's not go behind the myths, we'll go with clear hardcore scientific facts. I'm sure that we are just now trying to swim outside the pandemic of COVID. And once we spread outside COVID, monkeypox came inside. And it was on the newspaper for a few months. And now the next person to be released is tomato flu. It's become like in uh, a movie release season that viruses keep on releasing in one, once and then, right? So well, let's discuss about tomato flu. Actually, the first case of documented tomato flu in our country was in Kerala in the month of May. From the month of May to the month of June, there are close to 85 cases of uh, tomato flu reported in children. This disease actually particularly affects children only. Later on, there were episodes of similar disease which is found in Orissa, which is found in Tamil Nadu and found in Karnataka. And of late, there are lots of health concerns in all the parts of India and there are health ministries giving out guidelines on what to do and what not to do about tomato flu. So, Tomato flu is nothing but a simple influenza virus. It's simple a virus. It's actually not a new disease as originally it was taught. It is not a group of COVID virus. It is not something of chicken gunia and dengue. It's not a new virus as initially it was claimed to be. It's actually an old disease. We already had an existing disease called hand foot mouth disease. So it's a variant of hand foot mouth disease which presents with rashes. The rashes are reddish and blotchy like looks like a tomato and hence it got the name tomato flu. Right, so need not worry about it. This disease has been known for mankind forever and we know how to handle diseases and it's kind of endemic in most of the places of the world. So the initial case of cohort of Kerala cases when they isolated the virus with the help of Pune Institute of Viral Sciences, we found that it was mostly of enterovirus which is one of the viruses which causes hand foot mouth disease. There are few cases of tomato flu report in the UK and Europe. People who travel from Kerala, there they were isolated to have Coxsackie A19 virus. So Coxsackie virus is not just something which is new to us. It's been an old virus. Like I said, it's a variant of hand foot mouth disease, which is already known to mankind. So who does this tomato flu affect? Or we'll use the term from now on, hand foot mouth disease. The hand foot mouth disease is going to affect primarily people from maybe around 5 to 10 years or maybe less than 5 years. It primarily affects children. It can also affect immunocompromised people. If you're having diabetes, if you're having any sorts of things which is going to lower your immunity, any chronic ailments, you might be at risk of having tomato flu. Sometimes even an immunocompetent adults can also get this infection. It's just a viral infection. Definitely extremes of age group, children and extreme adults and people with immunocompromised state are a bit prone compared to a healthy normal adult. How does it spread? Like most of the viruses, they spread via fomites. So if I'm having a tomato flu and infection, I'm going to use a kerchief or I'm going to bite my nose, any body secretion and touch the floor or touch the wood. If someone else touches the wood, it goes to their hand and it spreads their ways. That's why children are more prone. Because children in school, they are in very close contact. One person uses another person's pencils, rubber, notebooks. Children in the play school use toys together. So that those are all places where it can easily spread from one person to another. It is not going to spread by aerosol. It spreads primarily by fomites. It's not going to be spread by, by eating tomatoes as the name suggests. Right? The name is totally a wrong designation. It's been just sensationalized in the social media and we are just going to break it into bits and pieces. So tomato flu, once a person gets infected with tomato flu, what are the symptoms the person will have? One, like any other disease, there's going to be fever. The fever can be a high-grade fever, sometimes a low-grade fever as well. Not just fever, the patient will have symptoms of GI upset, can have a little bit of episodes of diarrhea. Especially the patient will have a very excruciating joint pains. 
If you have known about the disease chikungunya, it kind of mimics chikungunya. Patients also have rashes. The rashes can become bigger, can be radiation killer, and the rashes can produce secondary itching as well. Because of the itching produced by the rashes and per se the rashes, it becomes red and blotchy. Like I said, these rashes looks like a tomato splashed appearance, so it is given as a tomato flu as a name. That's all. They might have a similar symptom of a COVID-19. Because few COVID-19 patients also had pain in the joints, few of them had weakness, fever, respiratory infection. The only differential point for me here is the big blotchy rash or the tomato-like rashes, which is more specific for this hand, foot, mouth disease variant, the tomato flu. If you have any of the friends, family members, children at your home having symptoms of fever, running nose, lower GI symptoms, and rashes, please show to a doctor. Do not presume it is tomato flu because all these are characteristic features for many, many viral disorders. It could be dengue fever. It could be chikungunya. It could be COVID as well. So what I'm going to do is when we see a patient first, we're going to rule out all these common ones. Then, yes, I'm going to think of hand foot mouth disease. That is the tomato flu. The diagnosis is as simple. We're going to do a test called PCR. The same similar test what we did for COVID-19. And we can easily diagnose them by excluding also we can come to a conclusion it could be a hand foot mouth disease so what do i do if i have a person at home suffering from this hand foot mouth disease the first thing is definitely taking care of the patient with the help of your physician or just at home you can isolate make sure the patient is well hydrated that's very important because there's going to be loss of fluid from the nose from the git so hydration is extremely important for them as and when required, you might have some analgesics for the pain generally, paracetamol drug to reduce the fever, and in general, a good proper nutrition. I don't have any specific antiviral for this disease as of now, right? So I don't have any specific treatment. It's just going to be supportive care and a reassurance to the suffering kid. It's no problem. You're going to get back to normal. Second and the most important thing, how do I prevent others in the family acquiring this? First and the foremost thing, as I said, it's going to affect the immunocompromised patients. If in your home, if there are anyone who is having a chronic ailment, chronic disease, ask them not to go into the room where the kid is there. Or if there's one more kid, just isolate for a period of five to seven days. Generally, the spread happens during the five to seven days from maybe the onset of fever and the rashes. How do I isolate and what do I take care of it? Isolation as we did for COVID is more than enough. A separate room, lock the room, use gloves and masks. That's very, very important. Not just masks, gloves are also important. When you handle the bed sheets, the towels, the dresses, anything which is being which can carry the virus. Like I said, if it's gonna be kerchief, then I'm gonna sneeze. When the kid is gonna sneeze there, that can have the virus. If I touch the kerchief, that can come from to me. So whenever the caretaker is going to take care of the child. All these things, we, which we call them as fomites, the linens, the bed sheets, the pillow covers, clothes, kerchiefs, anything, whatever the kid uses, should be separately washed. If you have Dettol at home, use Dettol to wash it. That's more than enough for me, right? So if there is any kid in the family, apart from the infected kid, please don't let the kid go near them because it can spread fast. It's fine. It's fine to have a viral disease. It's not going to kill the patient. It's not mortal. It's just a disease, a hand foot mouth disease as I said. We know that for years together, the mortality rate of this is very, very minimal. So I'm not going to discuss about it at all. The alarming nature of the disease is just the spread what is there in the social media. So as of now, I need not worry about this new entity of tomato flu or the new name for an old entity of hand foot mouth disease. So that's about hand foot mouth disease. We don't have any vaccinations as of now, and there's no targeted drug, particularly for this virus as of now. Just a supportive care, like a routine URA. And if the patient is rashes, and if the patient, kid is going to become sick, not eating food properly, or excessive vomiting and diarrhea, please consult the nearest physician so that they can take care of the kid. Supportive management can be given inside the hospital as well. Thank you for watching the video, and hope to see you soon with another video. Till then, bye-bye from Dr. Anjali.